today and be something wonderful. In this field, you manifest the impossible. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. There was a comment from, from one of you on the channel that said, Tom, I wanted to talk about this idea of the um, reality distortion field. I just discovered this and I've been applying it and it's turned my reality upside down. I've really now understand that 3D reality is temporary, it's fleeting, it's always changing. This is what happened to me. I don't believe any of it. It, it was changing as I was in it. And it, 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 I, as I was in my imagination, I was bending 3D reality. And I just wanted, I was wondering what your thoughts on that. Well, guys, I'm gonna talk about this today and more. You can read, I think her name is Laura. You can read her uh, comments. Maybe I'll, I'll try to post it to the community board so you can see her full comments on this. This is powerful. The reality distortion field, or RDF, was coined um, in Apple computer back in 1981 by Bud Tribble, who was a software engineer who worked, of course, with Steve Jobs, the co-founder. And it, it was really to describe that charisma, that energy of Steve Jobs when you were around him. Why? Because Steve Jobs never accepted limits. He never, he never accepted that it's impossible. So, so he created this field around him and around the people that he worked with, believing that anything is possible deadlines, things that seemed impossible were not. He broke barriers and these people believed him, right? Even when, even when they knew that they were under his influence, they couldn't help themselves, but, but create, create things within the ideal of Steve Jobs. The reality distortion field, it's a term used to describe Apple co-founder Steve's job refusal to accept any limitations that stood in the way of his ideals, ideas or his ideal, or his desires, or what he wanted. So I'm, I'm not here to, to, to talk about the personality of Steve Jobs, or the book, or anything like that. I just want to, pick, to, to present this idea that Laura talked about on the channel of this reality distortion field, right? This is what Bob, Bud Tribble said of Steve Jobs. In his presence, reality is malleable. It wears off when he's not around. Hear this. So Steve Jobs knew the power of creating your own reality, that 3D is what you decide it is, that the world is your perception. And that's why it wore off when he wasn't around because it was Jobs creating his reality, right? So when, when, when Steve Jobs was projecting it, the, the, it was, the, the possibilities were limitless, right? This is really powerful here. So that's the term and it was said that Bob, Bud Tribble got that from Star Wars. So I guess Star Wars talked about distorting reality. But here's, and here's really the point I want to make today. I'm going to even come up, I'm going to even teach a process that I taught a few months ago, back before the, the channel blew up. So you might not have gotten to this, got, gotten to this video. But here's what I want to say. Neville got it knew the idea of, rea even though the term wasn't, wasn't popular then or it maybe didn't exist, reality trend distortion field, this is what Neville said, you're already that which you want to be and your refusal to believe it is the only reason you do not see it. That's what Neville said, Steve Jobs lived that, he knew, he refused to believe that it wasn't pot, that, that what he wanted wasn't possible, that his vision wasn't possible, that Apple computer, that back then they were saying it was too expensive and you don't need all those things. He saw his vision, right? And he created his reality around it, right? And this is what Bud Tribble said, in his presence, reality is malleable. It wears off when he's not around. That's powerful. So Steve Jobs understood that 3D reality doesn't exist outside your perception and experience of it. Do you get this, guys? That's what was going on with Laura, right? That's why reality was changing and, 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 and conforming to her ideal, right? To, to almost to a point where she said she got uh, worried about it or scared about it, 
right? That she was so much in her imagination. The 3D reality was changing so much. Why? Because it's your perception and experience of it. That's all 3D reality is. Everything, the universe, the people around you, the people, places, and things of 3D reality is all your perception and experience. It doesn't exist outside your experience of it. Steve Jobs knew this secret. And here's the real secret. The, 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 the co-workers called it his reality distortion, right? Reality distortion, but, but the field around Steve Jobs. But really, who's distorting reality? Steve Jobs believed that and knew that imagination, that his vision, that what he wanted, what he assumed, what he believed is reality. So it wasn't Steve Jobs distorting reality, it was the others believing in that fixed, dense 3D reality that, they have, that, that, that there's limitations there, that they can't be, do, or have whatever they want. That's big. It's not about distorting reality, rather it's about seeing and perceiving it as you would like it to be. It's about choosing it, right? Jobs' conviction, Steve Jobs' conviction, the RDF, reality distortion field, was so powerful that he was able to convince others anything was powerful, right? And a lot would say, well, it's his charisma, but all of it was everything. It was his belief in who he was, in his vision, and what he could create, right? His inner reality, or reality distortion field, manifested into his outer reality. Do you hear this? It, it had no choice. So that's really all we're ever talking about is the reality distortion field. That's what's cool about this, right? The paradox is that the reality distortion field is actually anything that puts limits on what you can be, do, or have. Do you hear this? Because that's distorted reality when there's limits. It's distorted when you believe in your fear. It's distorted when you believe in your doubts. It's distorted when you believe in your limitations. So it wasn't Steve Jobs who was living in a, in a, in a uh, imagined, distorted world. He was living in his imagination where it's real and where there are no limitations, where there are no distortions. It was the others. It was Bud Tribble who coined the term that was living in a distorted reality, <laughs> right? Of course, so what's the key? The key, the reality distortion field is 3D reality. What you imagine is real. So that's really the key, guys. That's the key. The distortion is 3D reality, or what you believe is fixed and unchangeable, or is with limits. Everything else, the field, the imagination is there. It's the field of infinite possibilities, in other words, right? So I want to talk about the AIM manifesting method. Right? There's nothing new here, but the way we're going to talk about it, it will feel new because we're going to talk it out creating your own reality distortion field of your wish fulfilled. Right? So really, it's about assuming and declaring what you want with conviction and then refusing to accept anything less than that. When you look at 3D reality, knowing that it's changing as you're looking at it, because you're looking as reality, right? The AIM method is assume, imagine, and then move. Assume it's done. Assume it's yours, right? Remember, assumptions create reality. Assumptions create your thoughts and beliefs, and your thoughts and beliefs create what you feel and create in the outside world. Do you hear this? It's our assumptions or our concept of ourselves. What we believe, our relationship to the world, is what, why I'm starting here. You know what you want. A lot of, a lot of um, teachers, I get it, you start with the first step. Write it down, what you want. Decide what you want. Well, you know what you want. So just go right to the assumption and claim it as done, as yours, right? Then imagine it. Imagine the end. We're going to talk about this in a few minutes. Imagine that simple scene that Neville Goddard talks about. <clears throat> right? In a state akin to sleep or an alpha state. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, right? Imagine though a scene that implies that it's fulfilled, a scene that follows the fulfillment, right? If it's you want to get married, imagine yourself on a honeymoon, right? If you, if you want to get pregnant, imagine yourself holding the baby. Imagine a scene, a simple scene, right? If you want to get a raise, imagine people congratulating you, that's what we're talking about here. Then move. Move in that conviction. 
Move about in 3D in the knowing that it's done. Move without attachment to the outcome because it's already yours. It's done. There is no need for, uh, for attachment, right? Three steps to create your own reality distortion field. Let's get into it. The aim method. Because when you aim, you're going to hit the target. It's a sure thing when you use the aim method. In the aim method, what's the first? Assume reality is what you say it is. The first step in aim, right? Aim, imagine, assume, imagine, and move. The first step, assume. Assume reality is what you say it is. Just like Steve Jobs did creating this, what they called a reality. They were saying it was like a power. It is a power. Right? It's your power. Just like Laura said on the channel, right? Assume reality is what you say it is. Why? Because, you, because it comes from you. It's only what you perceive and experience. That's the only reality. Just like joy doesn't exist outside the experience of joy, 3D reality doesn't exist outside your experience of it. There is no objective reality. It's only what you imagine, only what you assume and receive and perceive, right? Assume nothing is impossible. Steve Jobs assumed nothing was impossible, right? He did not accept that impossibilities, right? Assume 3D reality is malleable. It, 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 you can mold it to what you want and you are doing that in every moment, whether consciously or unconsciously, with your state of being, with whatever you're thinking, feeling, assuming. It's changing, right? Assume 3D reality is always changing, right? Assume any thoughts of, here's, this is big. Any thoughts of doubt or limitation are old realities. Resist nothing. <clears throat> once you get into it, once you distort reality to your wish fulfilled, it's impossible to have doubts. But if you do have them, assume they're just old realities that are changing right there. Don't accept it. Refuse them. Don't resist them but refuse them, I'm right? There's a difference. Refuse to accept them because you know better, right? Assume all possibilities exist, but that you choose that of your wish fulfilled. Assume that that reality exists, but it's already fading, and, and it, it exists in, in, in the field of infinite possibilities, but you're, you're stepping into a new reality. Assume nothing else but your desired reality. Refuse anything less. That's what Steve Jobs did beautifully. He held to his vision, right? So imagine the second step. First step, assume, the aim method. Assume. Imagine a simple scene that implies your wish is already fulfilled. We've talked about this in many videos, right? And, and it, could be, it, it could be you just simply saying to yourself, through your eyes, right? Seeing yourself through your eyes. Remember, you're not watching a movie. You're looking through the eyes of the imagined you. And it could be just you saying, as Neville says, isn't it wonderful? Or isn't that cool? Or I, I, I can't believe it, which I use a lot. I can't believe it, right? And this is so amazing, right? Any of that, but imagine a scene that implies it. Right? If it's an engagement, maybe it's the, the scene that one of, uh, one of the clients that I was talking to yesterday was using the scene that Neville uses where you're feeling the wedding ring or the engagement ring on your finger. It could be that. A, a simple scene, but here's important. It's not the scene. Remember, the power, the potency is not in the scene itself. Don't stress over whether it's the right scene. All scenes are right. The key in the scene is that it implies fulfillment, that it follows the wish already being fulfilled. That's the only requirement, right? Imagine there's an unbroken connection between you and your imagined end. An unbroken connection, it's a sure thing. That's how you distort and bend reality. It's an unbroken connection. Imagine the end no matter what's happened or what is happening in 3D reality. This is what Laura did on the channel. And, and, and she just stayed in that end no matter what and just saw as she, could, she, she was witness to 3D reality, things coming in and out, things falling away, right? This is what was happening. Here are the key points. Embody and enter the imagined you. Don't think of it. 
and don't watch it like a movie. Enter that imagined you in that imaginal scene, right? And again, if some of you say, well, I can't really imagine, then assume it, right? Declare it, right? Declare it with feeling and conviction that it's done, right? Or use what I a lot of times do now is an alpha state, a more relaxed state. It's not a state quite akin to sleep, but it's a, it's a pretty relaxed state where I'm breathing normally, but, but deeply. And I'm just imagining that, that it's mine, that, it, that, it, that it's done, that it's happening, right? So a state akin to sleep just before you drop off to sleep is the best time, right? All the spiritual teachers said that. Neville, um, Dr. Joseph Murphy, Dr. Joe Spencer, all of them know the power in the state akin to sleep, right? The power to impress that greater subconscious, right, as you fall off to sleep. Or start with a very relaxed state like the alpha. If you, if you, some of you say, well, I don't know how to get into a state akin to sleep. Start with an alpha state that's just a little bit more conscious awake. You're, more, you're a little bit more conscious, but you're still relaxed, still powerful. And then you might naturally move to a state akin to sleep or not. It doesn't matter. It's the power of your belief. It's the power of your conviction. More importantly, it's the power of walking around and that knowing that 3D reality is changing as you, as you rest in that fulfillment. That's the power, right? Give and feel gratitude. Feel the conviction that it's done, right? Give gratitude at the end of that imaginal act, right? Thank the Father or Spirit or your higher self, right, for, for already having that which you want and already being that which you wanted to be, right? There's power in that. So then, the, then in the third step in AIM, is move. Move as if it's already yours in 3D. Walk in that faith, right? Like Paul said, walk by faith, not by sight. Like Laura was doing in 3D, right? She turned the whole 3D, it was so flexible, right? It was changing in that moment. Move without attachment and inflated importance, right? Needing, needing it that it has to be, putting an ultimatum on it put places inflated importance. If it's already done, it's no need to inflate the importance. It's no need, there's no need to be attached. It's already yours. It's already within you, right? Move knowing failure or non-fulfillment is only a thought in a temporary perception. This is big, right? There is no such thing as failure. Some of you were asking me on the 369 method. Tom, it didn't, one said it didn't happen after nine days. There is no failure. There is no end. You can, you can imagine what you want. There, you, that's just a thought. And it's a temporary perception. Remember, when you say something doesn't happen, that means you're creating a reality where it didn't happen. Right? Assume it. Failure is impossible. Non-fulfillment is impossible. Right? Move only with the thought and conviction of fulfillment. Only with that thought. That's why in, this, in, in the AIM method, see if I get back to that, Notice, wish fulfilled is in the middle. That's where your focus is. That's where your focus stays. You're always moving back to the wish fulfilled, assuming, imagining, and moving, but always returning to that knowledge of fulfillment, to that conviction that it's done. So move without judging or reacting 3D conditions that appear contrary, right? Because you know they're temporary. It's already past. You're looking at the past and it's already, it's already changing. So there's, no need, so there's no need to react to it or do anything with 3D reality. It's all done within, right? And, and here's the key. It's not a process. It's a state of being. It's a new way of seeing, perceiving reality. That's what that reality distortion um, field is. It's a new way of seeing reality. It's a new way. It's nothing new that we're talking about, but we're talking about it in a different way. So remember, the AIM method is not really a process. It's, it's a state of being, right? Assume, imagine, and move in it. It's a state of being. It's a new way of seeing things. In this field, you manifest the impossible. In other words, in the rea reality distortion field, you manifest the impossible. I am your host, Tom Kieran, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification button, 
Like and share our videos. That's how we get our message out. You can follow us on Facebook at Be Something Wonderful. We have a group called the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors. More and more of you are joining. Thank you. You can join, feel free to join. Also, you can follow uh, us at uh, Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen. And you can visit our website anytime at TomKaren.com or BeSomethingWonderful.com. With great love, with great light, with infinite gratitude, this is Tom. See you soon.